In this video, we're going to cover rows in much more detail. Now, rows are a fundamental building block of how a page is structured in the builder here and are extremely versatile in your design once you understand how to use them to their full potential. Every piece of content you see on a page is contained within a row. Rows stretch the entire width of the page and they stack one on top of another from the header all the way down to the footer. Every row has its own set of settings and parameters. When I hover over a row, I get this little row prompt here in the top left. Let's give this first one a click. And we've already got some really helpful tools at our disposal. We've got some order shifting arrows here. So if we want to move this down a position, just give a click and it drops right down with ease. And we can, of course, easily move it right back up with a click up. These literally are building blocks for your page. We can add a blank row above with a simple click here, giving us a whole new canvas to add some more content to. But I'll go ahead and remove that for now. I can add an entrance animation for this row when it comes into view upon browser load. I can select which device, if any, that I want this hidden on. I can copy it for pasting elsewhere. I can set it as a navigation anchor, and of course, remove it if it's no longer needed. Now let's click into this option here for Edit Design. And when we do so, we get a powerful panel of settings exclusive to the row that we opened it for. Every row has its own settings panel, allowing you complete control over literally everything. Another way to access this design panel is to click on some empty space inside of a row. Just like that. Now let's run down some of our options here. Full bleed row. When this is toggled off, the row is going to limit the content inside to a maximum width of 960 pixels. Toggling this on will allow the content to stretch the entire width of the user's browser. And actually, this second row here is a really good example, so let's do that here. We've got a single text box centered in this row, and right now it's limited to 960 pixels wide. But if we jump into the settings panel and we toggle on full bleed, we now have our content stretching to the browser's edges. And you can, of course, fine tune the spacing of this in the margin and padding settings, which are also in this panel, and we're going to get there in a moment. For now, let me toggle this back off and jump back to our top row. Next up is our background settings. Any row at any time can be filled with a color or gradient, an image as we see here, or a video. Want to replace the image? No problem at all. Let's click Replace. Select a new image from our image library here. And boom, it's updated. And if you're using images, you also have the option here to add a background slider. So just click this prompt here, add some additional images, and you're set to go. Next up is parallax scrolling. So let's toggle this on for a sec. And you may be familiar with this. This gives you that 3D behavior when we scroll up and down the page. Or just simply toggle this back off if you want it to stay flat with the page. Next up, we've got some really intuitive positioning settings. Now, oftentimes your images won't have the same exact pixel dimensions as the real estate that they're filling. So you can adjust its position in said space with these tools here. We can customize a background overlay, which is allowing our text to pop out a little bit better. We've got some border and shadow settings. And finally, our spacing settings. Let's expand this dropdown. A spacing grid like this, you're gonna find on just about every single row, column, widget, anything in the builder. At any time, you can add or reduce the space of an element's margins, which are the numbers displayed on the outer rectangle, and the space of an element's padding, which are the numbers inside the rectangle. We can see right now 100 pixels of padding on the top and bottom, but let's say we wanted this row a bit taller. We could simply bump up both to 150, and everything adjusts in real time with ease. Lastly, let's scroll down the page a bit more, and we can see how each row sits right on top of another, and moving content around within each row is very simple. Any of these elements can be dragged up and down, left and right, and to move them around entirely, just click and drag, and when you've got the proper spot pinpointed, drop. It's that simple. 